Majesty the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh arrive at Royal Air Force Station Odium in Hampshire for the great coronation review and fly past. Lord Delisle and Dudley, VC, the Secretary of State for Air, welcomes the royal visitors who are introduced to many high-ranking officers of the service. More than 1,200 airmen and airwomen are on parade, flanked by over 300 aircraft. The coronation review of the Royal Air Force by Her Majesty is the biggest parade of aircraft on the ground and in the air ever mounted in the history of the service. The Queen and her husband are escorted by the parade commander, Group Captain R.J.A. Ford, for the inspection of the parade. The Duke of Edinburgh wears the uniform of Marshal of the Royal Air Force for the occasion. Upon his tunic, he wears the wings recently awarded to him. Among the other royal guests at the airfield is the Duke of Gloucester, also in Royal Air Force uniform. The inspection over, Her Majesty and Prince Philip return to the dais. From that position, they will watch the colour paraded in slow time. in slow time ends. All commands of the Royal Air Force at home are represented in the parade, which now marches past Her Majesty in quick time. Following the parade, Her Majesty and the Duke take luncheon in the officer's mess before they review the static parade of aircraft. On display are many of the planes which have swept Britain to the forefront of aviation and which have helped the Royal Air Force to maintain its position as the foremost air arm of any country in the world. Some of the latest jets have only recently come off the secret list. The Royal Air Force, its auxiliary and reserve forces and Commonwealth Air Forces have all contributed to this magnificent spectacle which Her Majesty is now to inspect more closely. The Duchess of Kent chats with some of the overseas visitors. Close by is her daughter, Princess Alexandra. The Duchess of Gloucester is another royal guest. Marshal of the Royal Air Force, Lord Douglas of Kirtleside, is among the distinguished personalities. Here is Marshal of the Royal Air Force, Lord Tanner. Meanwhile, the royal car is slowly making its way between the ranks of aircraft. Passing by Lincoln bombers, her Majesty's car turns towards another lane between the aircraft. In the foreground are Meteor fighters. Behind are the letters and varsities used by the Royal Air Force for training bomber and transport crews. Wing Commander Lindsay, who recently returned from fighting in Korea, is among the members of the Royal Canadian Air Force to be presented. Flight Lieutenant Kelly, also of the Royal Canadian Air Force, is another to be presented. Air Commodore Stevenson, commanding the static display, escorts Her Majesty. The Queen and the Duke spent about an hour touring the great static display and meeting many of the men of Her Majesty's Commonwealth Air Forces. Now they prepare to drive back to the saluting dais from which they will watch the fly past. Forty-two thousand people have gathered at Odium for the review, many of them foreign diplomats and attaches. On view to the public are not only the aircraft, but exhibits which show how great is the contribution of the men and women of the ground staffs to the fighting power of the Royal Air Force. 
This lifeboat is part of the equipment used for air-sea rescue. Rescue launches such as this are familiar sights at Coastal Command sea bases. So are the flare dinghies used to light water runways at night. Yes, men of the Royal Air Force have to be jacks of all trades and masters of them all. Think of a career in Civvy Street and it's a safe bet that there's a similar job in the service. Engineers, teachers, mechanics, clerks, radio technicians and many others, they're all catered for in the modern Royal Air Force and their equipment is second to none. past has already got underway. Varsity aircraft join the enormous aerial armada. From more than 40 different airfields all over Great Britain and Northern Ireland, over 600 aircraft of all types set course for Odium. The Royal Party glances up as the fly past begins. First comes a Sycamore helicopter trailing a Royal Air Force ensign. Chipmunks are next. These aircraft replace the Tiger Moth trainers. Now 12 Percival Prentices, still the standard basic trainer of the regular Air Force. The Duke raises his field glasses as some of the 45 Lincoln bombers fly past in tribute at a height of 1,900 feet. Next come nine Shackletons of Coastal Command. Now for the jets. First come vampire fighters. Venoms, some of the deadliest of the service's new aircraft. Now the Sabres, many of them flown by Canadian pilots. Following the light aircraft comes the mighty Victor, Britain's latest jet bomber. Just off the secret list, its crescent-shaped wings indicate a new trend. Its fly path speed is only about 300 miles an hour, but just what it can do at full throttle is still not revealed. the Vulcan, the world's first four-jet delta-wing bomber cruising at 1,200 feet. In final salute comes the swift F-4 at well over 650 miles an hour. So ends a great day in the annals of the Royal Air Force. Her Majesty and the Duke of Edinburgh bid farewell to Lord Delisle and Dudley before they leave the airfield. The men who fly and the men who keep them flying have paid a fitting tribute to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth in this, her coronation year.